Here I'll show you how to automatically timestamp your data entries in Excel. So each time you enter data, a new row in here in the table, have some time input over here. At first I'll show you how to do it using keyboard shortcuts, and then I'll show you a more effective way to have Excel automatically do it for you. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Okay, so here I have a very basic table set up. Oftentimes it'll be a lot larger than this, but just very simple name, item, value, notes, input time, and we'll also do updated time at the end, a neat little feature that we'll use with the automated feature. Let's go ahead and enter a new row. Say Thanos, what does he want? He probably wants some friends since he killed half of everything. Value, no value on friendship. Notes, he's probably sad. Maybe he's happy, who knows. Now, the time. When did I input this? Very simple keyboard shortcut. Control semicolon. Now I've got the date. Nice and easy. But you can see that there is no time there. If I wanted to input the time, I could do Control shift semicolon. And I'd get the time. So, very simple. It's Control semicolon for the date. And Control shift semicolon for the time. Two keyboard shortcuts that'll get that in there nice and easy. Unfortunately, there's no keyboard shortcut to get it in there together at once. So if you want to have the date and the time in there together, what you can do is hit control semicolon and notice that the cell is active right now. So we hit space and then control shift semicolon. And that puts both of them in the cell at the exact same time. We hit enter. Now let's go here and change the formatting so we can verify it's correct. You can see we have a date, the left side of the decimal point, and the time is the right side. So it's input it and formatted it correctly exactly how we want. Now you can change the formatting of the cell to be whatever you want as well. So we can right click format cells, go up here and change it to custom and have a nice date time. Where are you? There we go. So you'd want to format the column beforehand so you don't have to do that with each entry. And then once again, just control semicolon, space, control shift semicolon, enter. Nice and easy, but not so effective, easy to mess up, easy to forget the keyboard shortcuts, and just kind of annoying. You really want to have Excel do this for you on its own. And when we do that, we can also add a nice, neat little feature, which is the updated time. So here is when we put the values into the row. But what if we go back tomorrow or in a week or a year and we change these values? Well, you might want to record the last time that any of these values were updated. And we could also do that by hand, but in a year or a week from now, you might forget to do that. Using Excel to automatically do this, though, is really nice. That means the input time will never change, but the updated time will always change to reflect the most recent changes. So let's go ahead and do that. To do this, we're going to use a macro. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in the macro, and I'm going to show you how to change it to work with your data set. And then after that, once you know how to use it, I will go through and explain some of the bigger elements in the macro and how it works, though this is not a macro-specific tutorial. So if you want to just go ahead and get the macro, download this workbook, and then you'll have it right there. You don't have to type it out by hand. So let's go to the VBA window to install it, Alt F11. And now we're not going to insert this into a module. You don't do that, because what we want is we want this macro to run when we input data into the worksheet, which means we have to run it on the worksheet where we want it to work. So I want it to work on sheet one where I'm inputting the data. So I double click sheet one over here and then we get this where we can input the code. Looks just like a module. But what you want to do here is click the first drop down menu, click worksheet. Don't worry about what appears. Then go to the right drop down menu and click change. Now we can go ahead and delete this section. What this up here means is that any code that we put here will run 
whenever you change anything in the worksheet. So when we add a new value, when we delete something, when we update formulas or functions, the code will work here. And that's how we automatically have it so that it'll put in the date and time for us without us having to do anything. So let's go ahead and paste in the code now. I'll make this full screen. So here is our macro. Now don't get too scared. Let me show you how to change it to work for you. But before that, actually, let's go back and see how it works. So Alt F11. Now let's go ahead and enter something else over here. Dr. Strange. Now the second that I hit tab or enter, doesn't matter, it's going to fill in with a time and an updated time. Just like that. It's so awesome. And if I do it again, so I input some more data over here, we can wait just a little bit. You'll notice that the updated time will change, but the input time will stay exactly the same. So what does Dr. Strange want? He probably wants the time stone. And now when I hit tab, watch the updated time over here. It's going to change from 1455 to 1456, but input time stayed exactly the same. And if I select these cells, go up here and select general, you'll see that they are input in the correct date time format for Excel, the serial number that allows Excel to know it's a date and time and not just text. So control Z. So that's how it works. It's so awesome. Now let's change it to work for your data. The first thing that you want to figure out is right here for the table range. So your data table range. This right here, A2 to D10, that's my data table. That's where all my data will be, A2 to D10. Now, if you have a really big data table, you don't know how big it'll be, you might want to make it like A2 to D500,000 or 100,000 or a million. Make it so large that your data is never going to extend beyond that. Now that we know our data table, we just input that right here, easy peasy. Now go down here and change the column for the date time. So this my date time range, you can see it works on column E. So right here. So figure out where you want it to be. It's usually best to put it at the very end of all of your data and just put that column reference right there. And for the next one, Column for up last updated date time. And this one is just the very next column, column F. And that's all you have to change here. So those three things, your data table range, the column where you want the date to go, the date time when it was inserted, and the column for the last updated date time. You only have to change those three things and that's it, and it's gonna work. It doesn't matter if I entered the data here first or if I entered the data here first, it's always going to update it. So anywhere within my data table. Now, if you don't wanna watch anymore, that's okay. Just go ahead, download the workbook, and you can get this macro and change it to fit your data table, and no problemo. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this macro to explain a little bit more about how it works in case you want to learn that. So starting at the top, we have three ranges and they are stored within three variables, my table range, my date time range, and my updated range. Now I'm declaring each one of these as a range because each one will have a range stored in them. So this one will have the data table range. This one will have the range, or the, in this case, the cell reference range, where the date's going to go. And this one will have it for the updated date time. And though technically you don't have to declare the variables up here, it is, in this case, helpful. So declaring them as ranges makes it a little bit easier when building your macro. Now let's go to the very next step. So here I told you this is where you tell, this is where you store the range for your data table. So right here is your range, and this is the variable that holds the range. And when you're storing a range inside a variable, you have to use set in front of it. Now this section here is check if the, 
changed cell is in the data table or not. That's all that this does. So we use the intersect function to see if two ranges intersect. Right here, we have the my table range. So that's where your table is located, A2 to D10. And here we have target. Now, since we are in a worksheet change event, right here, you can see it right there. This runs every time anything in the worksheet is changed. And each time it runs, it passes you this variable right here called target, which is also a range. And target is the cell that was changed. So it's comparing this right here, target. It's saying, is the cell that was changed within, or does it intersect, your data table? And this intersect right here is what does that comparison. And if it does, it's going to return a range. If it doesn't, it's essentially going to return nothing. So what the next check does is it says, does the current cell intersect with the table range? Yes or no? If it is nothing, if it does not intersect the table, then we want to exit the sub. So we want to exit this. So no more code is going to run below this line if you do something out of the data table. So if I go back here and I go over here and I enter value, nothing happens. But if I go here, value, bam, because over here is within our data table. This is outside of the data table. Actually, this and this are as well. So you could delete that, nothing would happen. But if you do anything over here, even deletion in this case, the value will update. So this is very important right here to make sure that it's limited to your table range as far as what's going to happen. Now, the next thing that we do is we tell this where we want to put the date time and where we want to put the updated date time. So we set another range variable here, set my date time range equal to this range. And we want it to be in this column E, but what row do we want it to be in? So we use the ampersand to combine this with what will be a number. So it could be E3, E4, E5. This is where we get the E, this is where we get the row number. And target, remember, you get that in this function. It's passed as a range, target as a range. So we can put dot row after it and get the row. So that means that we're going to put it in column E in the same row as the cell that was just changed. And this next one does the exact same thing down here. Exactly the same, we're just going to put it in a different column. Now we have to determine if the input uh, date time should change. So we only want the input date time to run once. Input it when I input something over here in the data table, never change it again. So here it's going to check. Is the value of my date time range equal to nothing? Is the cell empty? If it is empty, then go down here and change the value of it to now. And this now is what puts the date time in the cell. The if statement around it here is what prevents it from being updated. But down here, update the updated date time value. This we want to always change. So we don't put it within an if statement. We just leave it out here so that it will run and change every time a cell within the data table is changed or updated or deleted or added. So if you are new to macros, <laughs> this is going to seem very confusing. And that's why I started off explaining simply how you change it for your data set. So I'll cover that really quickly one more time. Right here, is your data table. Make sure you add a bunch of extra rows at the end of it so that it will always encompass your data table. There are other ways to do this, but this is a very simple way. So you could make it A2 to D100,000 if you wanted. Down here, 
change the column where you want the inserted date time to go. Right now it's column E. Down here, change the column where you want the updated date time to go. Right now it's column F. Now if you didn't want the updated date time to be input here, you could put a single quotation mark right here and make it so that this code will not run. And you could also delete any references to this variable higher up in the macro. So if you don't want the updated date time, put it there. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it with the uncommented like that. Now, one thing before I go, I do want to say that you could also, if you wanted to, depending on how you have this worksheet sent out to people and who's putting stuff in it, you could have these columns protected or locked so that someone can't change them. So they can enter data over here in the data table, but they can't do anything with this stuff over here. You could also have copies of this data put onto another worksheet and have that hidden or password protected. There are a lot of different things you could do to protect or hide your data, make it so that someone cannot go back and change these values. However, that is well beyond the scope of this tutorial. But I just wanted to mention that so you know if you want to secure it a little bit more, you are able to do that. But that's it for this tutorial on how to automatically timestamp your data entries in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.